Hey guys, welcome to Treadmill Review Guru. Today we're taking a look at the Bowflex C6 indoor exercise bike. As you can see, this is a very sturdy, um, comfortable exercise bike. It has electromagnetic resistance, so it's very quiet. When you turn those pedals, it doesn't make any noise. So you can ride it inside any time of day. It has 100 resistance levels, which is also nice. Um, and it uses this resistance knob right here, which also acts as a brake, but will stop those pedals. It also has a built-in LCD screen. So it does give you ride metrics um, while you're on the bike, speed, calories, distance, things like that, which is really handy. It also has this attached tablet holder at the top and the bike is Bluetooth enabled. So it will sync with third-party apps, which is one of the greatest benefits on this bike is that you're not locked into one specific subscription. It will sync with Zwift, it will sync with Peloton. So you've got a lot of different options as far as which app you wanna use on the bike. So let's take a closer look at who it's best suited for. All right, so who it's for. This bike is best suited for people who want an affordable, comfortable bike. I've tested a lot of bikes here in the studio. I've taught spin classes for years. I've been on a lot of indoor exercise bikes. And this one and the Peloton, I would have to say, rank the top for saddle comfort. It's very comfortable to sit on and the geometry is very comfortable. So there's no friction points on the saddle um, and it's just padded enough that it provides you comfort on those long rides, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't get hard over time as you, as you sit on it. Uh, the handlebars are, are gently coated, so they have just a little bit of padding in them and they're sweat resistant, which is nice. I really like the console and um, the fact that you can sync it with third-party apps makes this a great option for riders who want the freedom to choose their own programming. You're not locked into one subscription service. So you've got a comfortable bike, you've got different options on your programming. And the other thing that I really like about this bike is it has hybrid pedals. So down here you can see it has an SPD cleat on one side and then it has just a flat pedal with a little bit of rubber grip around the outside with that adjustable cage. So this is really good for people who want different riding options. You can ride with, with clipped pedals, you can ride just with athletic shoes, you can use third-party apps. You don't have to use an app, you can just use the console and it's very comfortable. This bike is probably not the best option for someone who really wants an attached touchscreen. If you want the functionality and the integration of a full app, with programs and leaderboard and instructor shout outs and stuff like that. This provides you kind of a watered down version of that, but it doesn't give you all the same functionality that you get from an app that's integrated right into the bike. So that is something to be aware of. Um, and the bike itself is, is relatively new on the market, so we don't have long-term um, data on longevity and durability, but it seems very, very structurally sound, very comfortable and easy to ride. So let's take a closer look at construction. So let's take a look at the construction. This bike is very, very sturdy. I assembled it myself. It's not difficult to assemble. It was easy to do with one person. And as you can see, it doesn't really, I mean, I'm rocking it pretty good. It doesn't rock when you're on it. It doesn't wobble side to side. There's no shaking when you're riding in third position. It's very stable. You can see you have adjustable levelers right here on the side of both the front and rear stabilizers. And you can see right here, you can adjust this up or down so that you get just a little bit of tension against the floor so that that bike doesn't rock from side to side, uh, which is really nice because even if you set the bike up perfectly, your floor might not be completely even. And so these little levers here on the side just allow you to adjust the height on each side. So there's four of them. You can also see up here, you do have front mounted wheels. They don't engage with the floor unless you lift and tip the bike. So the bike itself, only weighs about 106 pounds. It's actually really, really pretty easy to move. You gotta be careful of those weights, but you can just lift that bike, tip it and roll it. Uh, and when you engage those wheels, it's easy to roll around. So that's nice as well. Um, the bike does require power. So it comes with an adapter that plugs in, but one thing to be aware of is it plugs in down here. And if you don't know otherwise, to me, that just looks like a bolt. So you have to know that that's where your power comes into the bike. So this bike does require power to keep the console activated, but it doesn't require Wi-Fi. 
So just plug it in and you're good to go. But it is very stable. Uh, the other thing that's nice is you have four adjustment points. So most bikes will have a minimum of three. We see three on pretty much all bikes. And that means that you can lift the seat and you can slide it back and forth. So that's two adjustment points. And then on most bikes, you can lift and lower the handlebars. On this one, you can also slide the handlebars forward and back. So those are your four different adjustment points, which means that I can drop this seat all the way down, drop the handlebars all the way down, pull the handlebars all the way in, and it will work for a very small rider. I can lift those handlebars all the way up, push them all the way out, lift this seat post all the way up and shift the saddle back and enhance that reach for larger riders. So it's a good option for people that are, are different sizes. You, you can just kind of find the right fit for you. Also the bike, like I said, it only weighs 106 pounds, but it will support up to 330 pounds, which is another thing to consider because even some of the really expensive treadmills that we have tested that have some exceptional functionality, they max out at 300 pounds. So this gives you a really pretty impressive weight capacity for the uh, weight of the bike. Now, one thing to be aware of on these is you'll notice these levers back here. These are called pop pins and they, they pop down. And what they do is they allow you to adjust where that, that handle is. So if it's not quite where you want it, you can pop it down and move it back. So for example, the other day I was riding and it was kind of out to the side and it was hitting my, my leg. So you just pop it down, move it back to where you want and then readjust it and you can pull it all the way in. So that one's about as tight as it goes. The same with this one. So let me show you this one up here. This larger one is to raise and lower the handlebars. If I drop the handlebars down too low, then this pop pin is gonna hit the side of the weight holder right here. So once again, you'll wanna pop that out and adjust it so that it's not hitting your weights um, and it's kind of out of the way. So those weights sit right there. They're really easy to reach. Um, this does have electromagnetic resistance. So it's, it's silent and you don't have any friction points. So if I move those pedals, let's see, I'll move them this way. As if we were cycling, I'll get it started. I mean, there's literally no noise. And then your resistance knob right here, you turn it right to increase, left to decrease, and it does act as a brake, which is another nice safety feature. I also like that this is a knob right here so that it doesn't hit your leg at any point. Um, it's kind of tucked up out of the way. The C6 bike actually has a very compact footprint. It's only 21 inches wide. It's about 52 inches high to the top of this tablet holder, and it's roughly 49 inches long. So it doesn't take up much space on your floor. You can tuck it away, you can move it in or out of a corner when you need to, possibly even a closet if you've got the space. Um, so that's nice. And your hybrid pedals will work with either a standard athletic shoe. You can put a standard athletic shoe in that, that flat side with the cage, or you can use an SPD cycling shoe, which are typically the ones that you would use for a spin class. They also work with mountain biking shoes often. So that kind of gives you different options. If you are someone who likes to ride clipped in, you already own cycling shoes, um, it will work with SPD pedals, but then you can also just use a regular athletic shoe as well. Bowflex covers this bike with a pretty um, impressive warranty. You've got a full 10 years on the frame which just kind of reflects the overall durability of the bike and the company's confidence in the, in the bike frame. It also has three years on parts and electronics. So that would include any moving part um, and your console would be the electronics. And then it covers one year on labor. All right, so as you can see, this is your console, your LCD screen right here. You have pretty good visibility when you're on the bike. The numbers are nice and bright. So you can see them even in low light conditions, which is really nice. You can see you've got RPMs and you kind of have a little bit of a graph up here at the top. It will increase as my RPMs as I go faster and then it will drop back down as I slow down. Um, and then of course you have time, calories, speed, distance, level, and your level is your resistance level. So right now I don't have any resistance on the bike. If I lean down and turn that knob just a little bit, it's gonna increase my resistance. Um, so you can jump it all the way up. Let's take it all the way to hundred. That's how high it goes. See if I can pedal. There we go. So there's your max resistance. So you can hear there's really, even when I'm pedaling at max resistance, there's no noise. So let me drop that back down. Um, and you can adjust your metrics right here on the console if you need to, which is nice. You can reset after each ride. 
and right here is your Bluetooth button. So the one nice thing about the console is it is Bluetooth compatible, so you can sync it with different devices, and it comes with an armband heart rate strap, which is really nice because you can just put it on your arm and use it while you're riding. It's a little less invasive than a chest strap. It's easier to share between riders. Um, your arm just isn't quite as personal as your chest, so that's nice. And it also includes a charger for that, for that arm, arm band strap. So that's nice. The other thing is um, you do get SPD clips right there. They come with the bike when you, when you purchase your bike. So just to make sure that you have the right clips that will work with that pedal. As long as you have cycling shoes, they should screw into the bottom. So you can kind of, kind of see right here, um, it changes as I ride. There are cadence sensors in the pedals. So when you are working via Bluetooth, and we'll demo that for you in just a minute, you can get your RPMs and your speed in other programs, which is nice. Um, you do have two water bottle cages down here that hold your water bottles, and you can see you have multi-position handlebars. I can drop, drop down and ride into a more arrow position. I can set up straight, stay here in first position, so you've got different options. So let me show you real quick how to use that Bluetooth feature. So I have Peloton, the Peloton app on my iPad. So I'm just gonna bring it up. Now you can see it's gonna look for, I have the first thing that you do is open your Peloton app and choose a class. And I've already kind of got a class running, I'm like two minutes in or something. Um, and it's gonna bring this up, connected devices. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna hold down my Bluetooth button until it beeps and it's going to look for IC bike. So this is the IC bike. So I select that, we're now connected. So I come back out and you can see right there, it's transmitting my cadence directly to the app. So if I start my program and I start to ride, I've got my leaderboard there on the side, there's my cadence. So that's how the app integration works. You'll notice you're not getting the other ride metrics that you get with the standard Peloton app that's integrated with that touchscreen, but you do get um, just some of the extra features that are kind of fun and your cadence is right there on the side. And the nice thing is even if you are using a different app, the console still continues to work. So you kind of get metrics from two different places. All right, so let's take a look at the functionality of the bike, how it feels while you're on it. So but as I've mentioned before, you can find the right fit, which is really nice. Um, you can raise or lower those handlebars. The only thing we have found, if the handlebars are set too low, uh, sometimes, especially as I'm standing up, I had a tendency to maybe clip my water bottle with my knee. So just raise your handlebars a little bit if that happens. Um, so that is one thing to be aware of. You can see I do have my iPad tablet up here at the top, and I'm gonna keep that in just so you can keep an idea, an idea of how stable it is while I'm riding, that tablet doesn't rock around. It has this slightly spongy coating on it, which keeps it from sliding around. But what the tablet holder doesn't have, there's no adjustable clip. Um, these prongs aren't adjustable. So you have to make sure that if you had like a really thick protector or something on your screen, you might have to take it off. Um, and it doesn't have that adjustable clip on the top, which I would prefer, but it is pretty stable and this just kind of grippy material makes it so that it doesn't really rock or move around while you're riding. Let me ride just for a minute and I'm just gonna kind of demo um, different positions on the bike, how it sounds and feels while I'm riding. So you can see right here, I'm just seated in the saddle um, in comfortable first position. I've got, I can bring my arms straight in from the elbows so that I have a nice comfortable hold. Um, I can shift those handlebars back if I need to, or even raise them for a little more comfort if you wanna sit more upright, it's kind of up to you. Um, but I'm gonna increase resistance right here and just listen to how it sounds. Right now I'm at level five. So that jumped us to level 15. And let's add a little more. That jumped us to level 24. Let's add a little more. There's 36 and 52. So you can see the only noise that's generated when you're cycling is actually from the motion of the flywheel. And as the resistance gets heavier, your noise actually goes down. It's quieter. So I'm gonna stand up out of the saddle, holding that 
level 52 resistance. So about halfway, let me add a little bit more. So I'm at 70. I can hinge at the hips. I've got good clearance over that saddle, um, a comfortable distance from the top of those handlebars. And again, very little, it's just super quiet. So let me take it all the way to 100 and try not to get out of breath. Okay, there we go. There's level 100. So I can pedal, but it is quite heavy. If you're a strong rider, um, that might not be as much resistance as you would want for your maximum level. You can adjust it just a little bit. Let me take that back down. All right, so I was just out here in third position. So let's drop that resistance real quick. Back down to about 25. Here I am in second position, which is the one that often causes the most rocking. You can see that that iPad doesn't really move. Handlebars are stable. So as you can see, there's a lot of things about the C6 bike that we really like. There are a few things to be aware of. So the first one is, it's great that it has a tablet holder, but the tablet holder does not swivel and it doesn't pivot. You can't shift it, can't angle it up. Um, the position of the tablet is what it is. So that's one thing to be aware of. The other thing is, is as nice as it is to have third party apps and other functionality and stuff, a tablet screen isn't the same as an integrated touchscreen. It tends to be smaller. Um, you do kind of have to remember to have it there. So just something to be aware of. It's nice, but it's not quite the equivalent of having an attached touchscreen. The other thing is, is third party apps. You can use them and certain functions will sync with the bike. Like for example, when we use the Peloton app, we can get cadence right on the screen. So the bike will sync with the app to provide us cadence. But what we don't get is any other ride metrics. Um, your resistance level does not show up on the screen and you don't get any like shout outs, you don't show up on the leaderboard because there's no way for the Peloton app to really calibrate how hard you're working because the bike isn't the same. Um, so that is something to be aware of is you can use third party apps, but some of the functionality is limited. The other thing is this bike doesn't have any incline or decline. So the frame is stable, sits right on the floor and doesn't move and it doesn't have any like auto follow. So once again, if you were using the Peloton app or if you were using the iFit app or something like that, which have integrated automation in the app itself, that doesn't translate on this bike. So you, you have to manually adjust all your resistance and stuff as you're riding. So just a few things to be aware of. However, some things that we do really like about this bike, it provides you the freedom to use the app you want. And typically when you opt for the digital version of an app, it's less expensive than the integrated version. So like for example, the Peloton app, Peloton Digital, if I buy it separate from the bike and I just use it on my iPad, it's only $13 a month. Whereas if you own the Peloton bike with the integrated touchscreen, the uh, subscription is like $38 a month. So you save quite a bit of money on the bike and you save quite a bit of money on the app. One of the things we like the most about this bike is it has a very affordable price point. So this bike is currently priced under $1,000, which makes it less than half the Peloton bike. So that's, that's something that we really like. The other thing is this bike is very, very comfortable. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I ride a lot of spin bikes and, and this one, I really feel like I could ride for hours. I don't get uncomfortable on the saddle. You have lots of adjustment points in the geometry. Um, you have hybrid pedals, so you can ride with regular shoes. You can ride with spin shoes if you have um, ones with SPD clips. So those are a few things that we really like. The other thing that's nice is you have a hundred resistance levels. Now that doesn't correlate exactly with the Peloton resistance levels. Theirs are calibrated a little differently. You can adjust your resistance. If it feels like it's too tight for you, you can, you can adjust it down underneath just a little bit. Um, but what we do like is even if you're not using Peloton and you're just riding, 100 resistance levels make sense. 50 is halfway, 25 is a quarter. It just kind of is easy to understand about where you are when you're using those resistance levels because 100 is a very, even easy, easy number to understand. Um, the other thing that we like is the bike is really pretty lightweight. It's only 106 pounds, but it will support up to 330 pounds. So it's pretty impressive as far as strength and durability. Um, and it should work for riders of, you know, most sizes. 
the other thing is, is as always, cycling is a excellent low impact exercise. And this bike really has a pretty easy step over height. It's not hard to get on and off. Um, and it would work if you're in an apartment, if you're in a shared space, uh, if you wanna exercise at times when maybe others are asleep or even working or whatever, you have that option because it's very quiet. So there's a lot of things that we really like about this bike. The 10 year uh, warranty on the frame is also a nice perk. So for current pricing, make sure and click the link below. For a detailed written review, check us out at treadmillreviewguru.com. We have a full in-depth review of this bike with close-up pictures and stuff like that. And as always, if you like our reviews, make sure and subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And let us know in the comments below what you think.